Hi, my name is George Garcia. And I am a community manager with Fusion 360 Electronics and Eagle. Welcome to our fifth and final episode of our A to Z tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to go over how you can generate manufacturing data for your PCB in order to have it professionally manufactured. So let's go ahead and go into our 2D PCB. What we want to do is go to the manufacturing menu. On the manufacturing menu, you're going to see that you have four options. So let's go to the first one. Now, this is our manufacturing preview. It gives you a view of what the finished board will look like. You can adjust the settings for different solder mask colors. You can see here top side, bottom side. You can get information about the board. So this is useful when you're getting pricing information. So you can get its area. You can get the number of components, number of drills, etc. Similarly, you can get a drill table for your manufacturer. Now from here, if we go back to preview, you'll notice that we have the option to export an image. We can export a DXF or we can go to CAM. If we go to CAM, this is going to open up our CAM processor. Now this window initially may be a little intimidating. You see a lot of sections, but it's actually very straightforward. Fundamentally, in PCBs, you have two main types of file exports. So you can export Gerbers, which are the de facto standard. Every board house, every manufacturer can accept Gerbers. And these are literally the minimum amount of information necessary in order to get the PCBs made. So what you're going to notice, if we look here in the Gerber section, under this main section, we have several different files. And the ways Gerbers work is that you get board features and you export each specific board feature as its own layer. So for example, all of the top copper is one Gerber file. And when you select the section, you'll get a preview here on the right side, and you can see what layers make up that specific Gerber file. And they can be configured by simply clicking here in the Edit Layers dialog. And the procedure is the same for bottom copper. For the board outline, we have a profile. You can get solder mask top, solder mask bottom, etc. This is a procedure for generating your Gerbers. Now, in addition to the Gerbers, you'll notice that the CAM processor will also generate a drill file, which you can configure to your own specifications, as well as the materials and pick and place information. Now, a pick and place file is used by a machine in order to place all of the components on your PCB when you're doing assembly. And this is something that in high volume is very common. If you're going to build the board yourself, you're going to solder a prototype this particular file isn't necessarily as important. Now, like I said, initially, this particular dialog can be a little bit overwhelming. But the good thing is in Fusion Electronics, we've already set up these templates that look at your board stack up and automatically pick the nearest template. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel the CAM processor. It's going to ask if I want to save it. I'm going to say no. So this is the one-click manufacturing, and if you're getting started, this is what we recommend. So if I click it, you'll see that it's already analyzed my board, and it gives me a summary of all the files that it's going to generate. And at the bottom, you can see it's based on the two-layer template cam, because this is a simple two-layer board. So I'm going to click OK. And now I can say where I want it saved, and I'm going to pick the desktop. Save. OK. Now it opened it. Perfect. Now, one other thing I do want to bring to your attention is this ODB++ export option. Now, this is a newer manufacturing format, and it represents a push to try to make manufacturing data richer for the manufacturer. Remember how I said that Gerbers are literally the bare minimum that's necessary. Um, because of that, you need a lot of them. You need multiple files in order to have all the information that the board manufacturer will need especially if you intend the board manufacturer to assemble the boards for you. A format like ODB++ and other equivalents such as IPC2581 tries to make the manufacturing data more intelligent. It streamlines it. It provides all of the setup information. It carries more data, which for your manufacturer makes things a lot easier. So if you run into a manufacturer who's willing to take ODB++, you're going to make their lives easier, and in turn, they'll make your lives easier. Usually, it's a bit cheaper if a manufacturer supports ODB++ to give them the files in ODB++ instead of giving them Gerbers, which they then convert to work with their machine setup.
Okay, so at this point, we've generated our Gerbers and we're ready to send them off to a manufacturer. But one thing I would recommend to do is to make sure that you check your Gerbers before you send them off. At the end of the day, all responsibility for correctness falls on the designer. So it's in your best interest to check them out using a Gerber viewer. And the one I typically recommend, the one I've used for many years, is ViewMate called by a company called Pentalogix. You can Google it. Um, and they have a free Gerber viewer. So ViewMate by Pentalogix. And that's what we're going to see now. So you see that ViewMate is a very straightforward program. And obviously, this isn't intended to be a tutorial on ViewMate. But we are going to go ahead and import our files. I'm going to go File, Import. And you can pick specific files, Gerbers, ODB++, et cetera. I'm going to pick a zip, since that's what, what, what was generated by Fusion 360. So zip, go to my desktop, find the file, select. Now what you're going to notice is when you do this, it's going to show you all of the files that were interpreted. It's going to show you their units and their format. Now, all Gerber viewers take a guess at the format of the files. And most of the time, they are correct. But if you ever see that something looks off in its size, typically it'll be the drill file. And usually if it's off, what you'll notice is that it'll be either 10 times bigger or 10 times smaller. If you see that, just be aware that it's not that anything went wrong with the Gerber generation. It's just that your Gerber viewer made an incorrect guess, and you'll have to select the file and, and explicitly specify what its, what its format is. So I'm going to go ahead and import these files. And you'll see everything is, is overlaid, so it's hard to see. But let's go ahead and turn off some of these files, and then we can kind of inspect them one by one. So I've turned off the top and bottom copper. And now we can see the rest of these files, right? We can see our profile. We can see the silk screen on the bottom, silk screen on the top. We can see the solder mask openings. We can see the drills. And if we go ahead and now I'll turn on the top copper, now we can verify our top polygon. And now I'll turn on the bottom, and we can see all the traces. So everything looks good. Everything looks as expected. And at this point, I would be ready to send it off to manufacturing. So let's go ahead and go back to Fusion 360. So at this point, we've done everything we need to do in order to have our board ready for manufacture. You would go ahead now and go to your manufacturer of choice and email them the manufacturing files. Now, there are some manufacturers that are set up to deal with Fusion Electronics files. You can go ahead and sometimes just give them the straight board file, but we do recommend exporting Gerbers or exporting ODB++. And the reason for this is when you export the Gerbers, when you export ODB++, you can make sure that there is no room for interpretation in the board data. You've sent them exactly what they need for the board to be made. If you literally give them the board file from Fusion 360 Electronics, then you don't know how they may process it. So it's always in your best interest to take the time to generate the Gerbers. As you can see in this video, it's not difficult. And I want to thank you for joining us on this A to Z tutorial series. We've gone through project setup, doing a schematic, generating your board outline, doing ECAD, MCAD, doing the layout, doing the 3D PCB, and now generating our manufacturing data. So thank you for taking the time to, go, to watch through this tutorial series. And we look forward to seeing you in our next video.